Oh, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. There is in the presence of God. Hallelujah. You know, as we've been, as been going about and we've been learning more and more about, it's important that we reflect on actually learning about God. You know, sometimes we hear so many things about God. We keep on hearing about God. If God is good, God is good. And we hear, oh, yes, God is my father and all that. But how do I put it into my life? How do I apply it into my life? How does it make that word that is out here being preached be a word that is not just out there, but it's a my, in my heart and it's me? That word doesn't just belong to someone else beside me, but it belongs to me. Amen? So it's important that we also not just know about God, we know how to learn, how to learn about God. Okay, so as we go about, I'm going to look at a few scriptures here tonight. And uh, what we're going to learn is the order of learning. Amen? We're going to learn about how to learn. Okay? Go in class one. Because if we can't learn, there is no growth. Amen? Okay, let's read from Proverbs 4.20. Everyone know for Proverbs 4.20? Amen. Amen. I've been reading this scripture for quite some time. I remember when my grandma was here that uh, I used to teach it to her so that she could buy heart it in Gujarati for quite some time. I taught her that. And most of the part she did remember. <laughs> so let's, let's look at this. Proverbs 4.20. Okay. But we, before we go there, okay, we're looking in the book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs is all about teaching practical knowledge of how to do things in this world. Okay. It's not just spiritual knowledge it's teaching you actually how to use the spiritual knowledge into this practical world and how to apply those things what god is saying into your life that is why solomon is regarded as one of the wisest person in the bible okay jesus is the wisest but solomon was regarded as one of the wisest and that's why he wrote the book of proverbs and this is his teachings of how to go about learning okay okay so we're going to learn a few things so let's just go through it quickly and then we'll come back first thing Let's read everyone there, 420. Okay, let's read. It says, my son, give attention to my words. Okay, so if you're writing down notes, first thing, give attention. Okay, first principle of learning, give attention. Okay, second part, let's read here. It says here, incline your ear to my sayings. Okay, second part, incline your ear to my sayings. We'll come back to all of this. I'm just giving you the order ahead of time. Okay, let's look at the next verse. It says here, do not let them depart from your eyes. Third part, do not let them depart from your eyes. Okay, I'll give you a bit of time. I think some people are writing, so. Okay, and then the fourth one, keep them in the midst of your heart. Okay, everyone there? Keep them in the midst of your heart and go to verse 24. Verse 24. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Okay? Everyone there? So let's repeat. I think we've got five. Five steps. This is the five, what I call the order of learning. Five things. In this order, that's how you learn. First thing, you give attention. Okay? Second thing, you incline your ears. Then, you involve your eyes. Fourth thing is you keep them in your heart. And the fifth thing is stop saying the wrong things. Amen? Okay, so let's look at this order and we'll go through it together. So the first purpose we must know, what is the purpose of learning? Learning's first purpose is to get an end result. There is no purpose of learning if we're not going for an end result. There is no point in me learning about physics if I'm not going to use physics at all. Okay? If I'm not, not going to be a doctor, there's no point on me learning all things about medicine. Because what will happen, because I tell you, your brain has been functioned to forget things. That is the truth. Their brain has been functioned to forget things. 
not in a negative way. Your brain is so powerful that it can, it can put away things that it does not need and put it in a corner. It focuses on the things that you actually need. That's why you do certain things out of habit and you keep on doing. That is why certain things you can do better than someone else because that has become your strong point. So that is where learning comes in. Okay, so it says here, this is what I wrote in my notes. It says here, learning has an end result. That means when you learn something and then apply it, you will generally get what you are taught. Okay? So the purpose of learning is so that you, if you learn it correctly, you will get what the principal has taught. Okay? First thing, let's look at it. This is what Solomon taught. Give attention. The first principle of learning is to own is to give attention. And what I call give attention is your need for that learning. If you have no need for change, you will never change. If you have no need to learn something, you will never learn. The whole purpose of giving attention is that I actually need this. I can sit here and hear a thousand sermons, but if I am not giving my attention to it, if I'm not actually looking... So that that word is going to teach me something, is that word is going to change me something, there is no learning going to happen. First principle of learning is give attention. Man? And that is most important because without this, no matter what steps you do, you can put the, even, you know what I tell you, you can put the earphones and you can listen to messages, but if you're not giving attention, if you are not focused to learn, there is no learning going to happen. Okay, it says here, this is what I wrote, and attention is simply the willingness to learn. Only those who know there is something to learn have the ability to learn. If you don't see a need to learn, you will not be taught no matter how gold the truth is. It doesn't matter how good the truth is. You know, the Bible says, don't put your pearls in, in front of pigs. You know why it says that? It's because no matter how good the pearl is to the pig, it's just, they're just going to crush it. It doesn't matter to them. That's why you put pearls in front of humans who can use it. Man, that's why you wear gold chains because only a gold chain can be worn by humans, not, not by animals. What are you going to do with it? Why is there gold in this world? If you're not going to use it, what's the purpose of gold in this world? Come on, why, why is there so much gemstones and everything? If you're not going to use it, what's the purpose? Why, why would God go to such lengths to put it so deep in the ground and just so that we're not going to use it? Come on. See, no matter how good the truth is, see, that's God's principle about teaching something is not He will never give it to your face. Because if you don't go make the effort to learn it, you will never learn it. That is the whole purpose of attention, is that you actually say, I want to learn something. Man, students, when you're in school, if you're not going to give attention, you can play around the whole day. <laughs> and when exam time comes, you'll know what happens. I remember when I was in school, so what happens is that I did not have a good habit of uh, writing a lot of notes. I wasn't though one of those persons who write a lot of notes. Even in university, I didn't write a lot of notes. So if I took a book, probably it will be empty by the end of the semester. <laughs> the chances were that. But then I got good marks. And I always look to think back, why is this happening? So one time I was sitting down, I was going through the Bible, and I got through this. And this is what God told me. He says, you know what? If you are able to give attention to what the person is saying in class, you are most bound to learn most of the things. You know why? Because your whole a idea, your whole attitude is so that your body is wanting to learn. It doesn't mean you don't go back and learn things. That, but my telling you my attitude is that attitude begins there. The learning attitude begins of when we start. Okay? Got that? First part, give attention. Let's look at the next part. I'm not sure if we're going to finish the next part. Okay. <laughs> This is the whole reason we came to the scripture. Let's read it again. And read from here. Okay, let's read from here. Incline your ear to my sayings. Okay. 
Once you've given the attention, learning begins by hearing. Okay? Throughout the Bible, throughout every time, you can keep on looking and over and over. See, today we have technology that sees, that teaches us by seeing. But you know, that technology did not exist before. See, we look at this television and you say, this is the television that's going to teach me. But the truth is, your learning begins from your hearing. That's why God created, you know, you know how your body is created? Your whole body's balance is here. When you, when you get, you know how you get spinning head and all those things that people say? And they will tell you, oh, you've got ear imbalance. You know what that means? That means there's something out of balance in your ears. Something out in your hearing. That's what I call, if you are spiritually imbalanced, there's something wrong with your hearing. So when we go to hearing, every time throughout the Bible, we see God telling us, hear my word. Keep your ears inclined to my word. Why is that? Because every time you hear, your whole thought process is processing that information. When you are looking at something, it's just for remembrance. Remember that. We'll go to that. But I'm just going ahead. When you say this, you know, whenever God says, look at something, it's all about remembering something. It's all about going back to something just to remind yourself. It's never about learning. All learning begins in hearing. Faith comes by? Hearing. Faith comes by? Hearing. hearing. Isn't that truth? Faith comes by hearing. Today we can't hear a message if there is no video in it. Come on. Isn't that true? We, we can't hear a pastor preaching because he's got his tone is out. If he's not got an exciting voice, maybe I can't hear the message. If, if, if the video if color is out, I can't listen to the message. If this is not just right. See, what we are telling ourselves is that everything needs to be right for me to learn. But the truth is only one thing needs to be set right, is that your hearing is set right. No matter how much noise you hear, if you can tune your ears to hearing God in the midst of the storm, you can hear the whispers of God. Hearing God is not hard. It's the choice we make. Are we going to hear or are we going to look first? The word says, I live by not by sight. Amen? We don't live by sight, but we live by faith. And where does faith come from? The just shall live by? Okay, let, let, let's put it away. Faith comes by? So how do the just live? Amen. The just shall live by hearing the word of God. See, that is the truth of learning. How, If you want to live a righteous life, if you want to live a righteous way, you must hear what God says. You must learn about what God is saying about these things. If you don't understand righteousness, then go hear about righteousness. Don't just focus on watching. You know, the Bible wasn't given in a video first. Come on. If the Bible wasn't given in the video first, we've got words because words are supposed to be heard. Language begins with not just reading. Language begins first by hearing. Language, the whole, whole language system of yours starts, you start learning when you're a baby, when you're just hearing your mother talking to you in that language and suddenly you just start speaking words. How, where did they go? Read something? Did they go watch a video of how to speak that language? Where did they get that? They just heard. They just hear. See, that is, we need to come back to the basics of understanding this. The basic learning principle is hearing. The longer we go away from that, far harder it will be to learn. If we are looking, oh, if, the, if, you know, I'll, if I go to a conference, oh, that's when I learn. Because I will see more people, the pastor will preach a better message, and I will see a more worship. See, all that is just an atmosphere that is trying to convince you. Yes, it all works. It all works. I'm not, saying it, I'm not denying its power. It works. You know why? Because you are convinced. But I want you to tell you, you don't need all that to be convinced. You can hear God's word now and be convinced of God's goodness. 
You don't need to hear just because some preacher from overseas has come and just preach a message. That's why that message is good. The principle is about are you hearing? Are you hearing? Are, are you hearing with that intent to learn? Are you hearing with that intent to learn? Okay? I read some of the notes that I've given out. It says here, it says, I've written this. This is a, how many times do we sit down, shutting down all our other senses and just hear God's word? Isn't it hard sometimes? Oh, I, I've got so many things. No, no. But how many of us can actually say, say look, I'm, this is my quiet time. This is where I'm going to hear what God says to me. I'm going to put down everything. I'm going to shut down everything. I'm not going to use it. The, there will be no other noise around me. All I'm going to do is just sit down and hear. And people say, hear what? Hear the wind? No, you're not hearing the wind. You are hearing the creator God who whispers to you every time of what he's saying to you. See, we think God is not speaking to us. That's why we find that some people can hear the voice of God better than others. But the truth is, those people who can hear God's voice better are just those who have actually had the willing, conscious decision that I want to hear God's voice. If you want to hear God's voice, God is faithful. He is not someone who is biased to anyone. He is not a respect of any person. If you want to hear God's voice, God is a father and he's speaking to you right now. You will hear God's voice. There is no one out there who as a son can be denied that authority to the father. There is no one out there. Amen? Okay, let's just read some of the other things I said there. Yeah? Hearing is not something to be undervalued. Your hearing is directly connected to what you learn today. Words you hear have far more great impact your believing than any other form of word, whether seeing or speaking or reading. What you hear today has far more impact in your life than speaking, than reading. And there's one more I said. And seeing. Seeing, reading, and speaking. It's all there. They do impact. But nothing impacts your life more than hearing. When a person says something bad about you, how much does it hurt? How much does it hurt? Why does it hurt? That word impacts your life. When someone says something in front of you, about you, why do we sometimes we cry out? Why do, we, why do we fall in tears? What happens? Something impacts our life on the inside. Because those words are filled with so much power. Your hearing ability concentrates on those. Whenever that is, the, that is why when you come here, you say good things about each other. You know why? Because those good things are going to impact their lives as well. When you say to someone, be blessed, don't just say it as a, just something to say hello. You are saying life into them. Amen. You are saying life, God's word. You are saying the life of God that is going to impact and change their life. Hearing begins there. That is the purpose. See, faith, even even faith, what we need to learn about, it comes just going to come by hearing. So focus on yourself on hearing. If you have to train yourself, go train yourself. If you have to train yourselves to hearing, then train yourself. You know how you do it? Shut down everything else. For a time being, don't just watch messages, just listen to them. See the impact in your life and then tell me. Because once you start hearing, I'm telling you, your life, the, your vision, you are, your imagination, all of that grows. Because you are actually using your imagination to see things in the Word. You're not just using someone else's vision just to see that video. You are actually using your own imagination, and that imagination can change a lot of things. That's a message for some other day, but your imagination is impacted by your hearing. Man? So I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to undervalue ever hearing. If you want to learn about God, hearing should be your priority. Not just reading the word, not just, not just see, when I say 
reading the word. You read the Bible. Don't just read with your eyes. If you want to hear the Bible, you've got a voice. You can hear yourself. You can speak to yourself and you can hear. Make yourself own hear. So you don't need someone else to speak just so that you can hear. Pick up the Bible and start speaking those words. Because when you speak those words, you are actually not only speaking it, you are actually connecting your own self to hear as well. There's times when we just, you know, just with our eyes read the Bible. It's all good. It's all good. There's nothing wrong in that. I'm not saying wrong. But if you really want to learn, concentrate. Just do this. Just do this. Start reading those same words. It's reading to your own self. And you will hear those words. And those words that you are hearing will change your whole way. Because what will happen, this is what will happen actually, is that your ears will be tuned to hearing those words. Next time something happens, your ears have tuned your whole mindset to listen to only those words. When situations come, when problems come, your, your body is not looking for problems. Your mindset is not looking for problems. Your ears have tuned your whole body to look for what God has said. It has concentrated itself to hear what God has said. So that's what happens, is that when you hear, then a situation comes, those situations will remind you of what you've heard. And that is the principle of hearing. Okay? Let's not forget, and let's not, let's not forget the order. Give attention, focus yourself, and let's start hearing. Amen? Let's see if we can do one more. It says here, Okay. Now, let's look at verse 21. Do not let depart them, do not let them depart from your eyes. Okay, now the eyes are involved. Give attention, then the ears, then the eyes. The whole purpose of the eyes is so that you don't let the word depart from them. And why you don't let them depart is so that you are reminded over and over of the word. Is so that you, it's not something you learn from. It's actually you are reminding yourself. You know, the Israelites were supposed to wear and put the word in front of their eyes. They were actually supposed to. And what, they, what was that? So that they would re be reminded of God's promises. They put it on their bodies so that they would be reminded of God's promises. See, the whole purpose of your eyes is to remind you of God's goodness. That is why God has made the whole nature so beautiful. Why is there color? We could have lived in a black and white world. There was nothing wrong. Come on, what's, what's wrong? See, we need to ask these questions. Why did God do what he did? I could look at you in black and white and we could all be the same. <laughs> Amen? See, there is nothing wrong. But why is there color? Because color tells you of God's goodness. There is color representing other things. When you look at the above, when you look above, why is it blue? Because the heavens are represented by the color blue. When you look at all these things, why, why do the flowers grow? So that you can understand, if God can take care of this flower, He can take much more of you. Why are there birds being fed all the time? So that you can know if the birds are being fed, so can you. All of everything around you is made for you. You're not made for them. There is so many creatures in this world, all of it made for you. Just to show if one can be different, another can be also different. If we can have the whale, we can also have the rat. <laughs> Why, what is the difference? See, both of them have their purpose. I want you to understand, both of them have their purpose. And in that, we are finding God's nature over creator. There is inside of you the same thing. You have been made to create. You have been made to create. That is why we've got eyes so that we can see all these things and be reminded of God's goodness. Amen. We, we can go about in life not just dreaming about something, but we can know, yes, there is a good God. Because if he can do this, I know he can do this as well. Our attention our ears but, but all our eyes do is just remind us remind us of god's goodness remind us of who he is
reminders of the, his power, reminders of his almighty goodness, almighty power, almighty creation. Whatever he can do, he's done it on earth. See, remember this. Whatever he could do, he's done it. He's used his Holy Spirit. He used the Holy Spirit and made everything. This was nothing was existing, but he made it for you and I. The seas to travel, the skies to travel. To go here, different countries or different beauties so that we can see beauty. We can understand beauty. How many creatures can understand beauty? But we've been made to understand beauty. We can understand what, what it means to be what means to be beautiful, what it means to be loving. We can understand that. I hope you're learning. Amen. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at this before we go, because I don't want you to miss this. Let, let's look at Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8 and verse 11. And there I'll read. It says, yeah, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. God. Next. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Next. But the ones on the rock are those when they hear, receive the word with joy, and they have no root who believe for a while in time and temptation and fall away. Next. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and ch choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. Okay, next. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who are having heard the word with a good noble and good heart, kept it and bear fruit with patience. Hearing the word. See, all this scripture is telling how you plant the word is also by hearing, not by seeing. Okay? That's just what I'm doing. But when, where does seeing come in here? Seeing allows the seed that you plant to grow to maturity. When you plant the seed and you remind yourself of that seed, it's not just bringing that seed up. It's you pour upon that seed, knowing that this seed has been planted. This promise has been planted in my life. I know this God, and I remind myself. All you're doing is that bringing that seed to harvest. Amen. Okay, let's look at one more. I think we've got a few more minutes. Okay, let's see step four. Everyone at step four? Step four is at verse 22. Verse 21. Proverbs 4, 21. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 21. Okay. While we get there, everyone know what we're talking about? We're talking about keeping them in the midst of your heart. How do you get the word into your heart? Whenever we talk about getting your word into your heart, it's using the first two things that we talked about. Hearing and seeing. And all that does is gives you the opportunity to meditate on the word. You want to buy what we call buy heart the word? You wanna, you don't, there's no such thing as buy heart. There. Most people just cramming. Nowadays, that's what they'll do. Eh? You know what cramming is? In a short space, you put everything there is no space, but you're still putting. And when, when, when the door opens, everything just comes out. Nothing good comes out of that. Okay? But what it means when you buy heart, that means that truth is no longer just a truth out there. That truth has become a truth in my heart. That word that is a seed on the outside has been planted into my heart. That is what we say, you keep them in the midst of your heart. That means I no longer have just seen the word. I've no longer just heard the word. I no longer have just given attention to the word. I have actually taken all those, that word and I have planted it in myself. That means that word, when I read this word, that's what we're actually doing right now. Is we're just putting meditation. We, we're just putting all our thought processes, everything on this word. We're breaking it down piece by piece. And we are breaking it down so that we can find the actual nutrients in each of the seed. And that seed is no longer just going to be a seed on the outside. That seed is going to be planted on the inside. So the next time I go about and see that verse, 
I'm not just seeing that verse. See, when I just go out and see that verse, I'm not just going to see that verse, I'm going to see all that verse is towards me. No, it's a good, good thing. Uh, one of the pastors say, this is how they say it, is that that's your bullet scripture. You know, that means I can, I can use it against my problems. I can use it. You can use even, you know how good the word is. You can take up one scripture and use it against all your problems. It has enough power. But if that word is truth to you, it's not going to do anything good if it's just truth to the neighbor. But if that word is truth to you, if that word is mine, you know how, how in the past we've said, God is my father. See, it can be true for anyone else, but that word, when it says my father, when that word no longer just becomes a my in that place, it becomes my father. Then you know, yes, when I go to my father, I know he is my father and I can ask like a son. I don't need to fear what he says. I don't need to think about what will happen. That word is no longer just out there. It becomes a seed in me. And the seed that is planted is the only seed that can produce a harvest. Amen? See, you can hear. You can remind yourself. But if that seed is not planted in your heart, you're not going to get a harvest. A seed can only produce a harvest if it is planted. Okay? Listen to this. A seed can only produce a harvest if it is planted. There is no seed in the world that is going to go and produce a harvest if it's just standing on that table. No matter how good, how much you hear the word, no matter how much you remind yourself of that word, but if that word is not truth to you, if that word is not something you have planted and believed it, you've not broken it down and you've learned of all the mixtures and how this thing is done, that word is not yours. It's just a word in the Bible. No. Let's take let's like a good example, eh? Because everyone loves food. Anyone loves food? You've been given taste buds. Enjoy food. Okay. When we look at food, okay. Anyone, any, any food that you like? Just a random, it's okay. Burger. Burger. Okay. Let's talk about burgers tonight. A burger can be made different ways, okay? In order to make a good burger, you need to know what happens in the burger inside. You need to know how the patty is made. You need to know what the patty is made of. You need to know how much salt there is. You need to know how much, how much uh, chili there is and how much all the spices there are, how much of exactly this ingredient you put and all the things and everything. So whatever the burger you eat on the outside, that's just a burger you're eating. But to the person who made it, the person, the chef who made it, to that person, it's, the, it's his burger. It's their burger. When you go to any good burger place? Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about just, for example, let's talk about McDonald's or Burger King, okay? So for them, they have a recipe. They have a recipe of how things are done. That is why when you go from this place to the other, you get the same thing. If I ask you to make that same burger at home, how many of you can? You can't do it. You know why? Because you don't know the ingredients. You don't know the recipe. You don't know how to do it. Exactly that same way when we talk about the word, that's what it is. Why is that word true to someone else and not to you? It's not because you don't know the word. It's because that word, you haven't broken down and understood what that word means to you. Amen. See, that's why the word says, taste and see that God is good. You know why? Because that's how you break it down. You have to break that word down. It cannot just be words in a Bible. It just can't be words in a Bible. It just can't be that. Because if it's just words in a Bible, there have been so many theologians, there have been so many people who have studied the Bible much more and read much more than you and I have. But not everyone believes the cross. You and I believe the cross. Why do we believe the cross? Because the cross is real to me. The cross is real to me. 
So when we talk about in the midst of your heart, keep them in the midst of all we are saying is that that seed is coming in, plant it. Meditate on it. Plant that seed. Put it down. And the harvest will come. We just read ago in Luke, there is no forcing the seed to come out and become a harvest. We look at why the seed sometimes doesn't grow. Eh? We've looked at that a bit, so we'll just look at the verse 23. No, let's look at verse 22 first. Verse 22. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. When we say about God's word, God's word and healing goes together. Amen? From all the times that I've read the Bible, I've learned this and I've put it, I'll put it out there. It says, every time you read the word, that means no matter if you read the word on finance or no matter how much you read the word on salvation, healing comes. The power of God's word is healing always comes. Okay? So every time, this is what the Bible, Proverbs, this is what Solomon is telling us here. They are life to those who find them and health to all your flesh. You want to have a healthy life? Feed yourself on the word. Then, okay, let's go on. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Amen. That word that you planted right now, now that word needs a little bit of watering and protecting. That means I'm no longer just going to allow all these other seeds. See, you can, okay, you're not going to like this, but let's, let, let's talk about this. See, when you watch television, what are you actually doing? You are actually planting seeds. Because you are using your ears and you're using your eyes. And both of them allow you to learn. Both of them are connected to your heart. Every time you do that, you are actually planting seeds. And sometimes those seeds are weeds. Sometimes those weeds, sometimes those seeds are just thorns. And all they do is just chew up all the good nutrients and then you say, where is my harvest? All that's what we're doing. See, concentrate on what you hear. Concentrate on what you are actually looking at. And concentrate on what you're actually planting into your heart. Because when you keep it with all diligence, out of this heart is the life that you want is going to come. Out of this, see what it says here. It says, for out of it, springs the issues of life that means out of the heart everything's gonna spring about your heart is your key what you call you know in the computer that's your key cpu everything happens there it doesn't happen in your mind come on your um, your mind comes second listen to this your mind comes second your heart comes first when we are talking when we talk about the heart in spiritual terms that is your actual spiritual mind not this mind of habits Okay, this mind will tell you habits and logic. That's all it does. This heart, this heart, this mind will tell you intents, thoughts, and action. Okay, this heart will tell you logic and habit. So some things you keep on doing, it will become a habit. And you will keep on doing it. You know, that means, you know, if you always wear your right shoe first, even without thinking, you will wear your right shoe first. That's the purpose of this mind, so that you, you know why it does that? It's so that you don't have to use much energy. Your body makes anything a habit so that you don't have to use a lot of energy. It processes everything effectively, no wastage. Okay? That's the whole purpose of this mind. Don't live with this mind. Okay. So we were talking about the heart, how you need to protect it. And uh, this is what I've written here, is that the, if hearing is vital to learning, keeping in them your, it's in the heart is the key to getting the real truths behind the word. First hear, put to remembrance, focus on meditating then. No point meditating without first hearing. Okay? Hear first, then meditate. Okay? Don't start meditating first on just something you've heard once. Okay. Let's look at the last one. Everyone there? How many steps we've covered? Four? Four? We've got... Okay, I'll just take five more minutes. We'll get the fifth one as well. Okay. <coughs> Good one here. 
Okay. So he said, put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Is it possible to get the message? I'm not too sure if we can. Let's see. In the meantime, while we get there. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. A deceitful mouth is that it says something and does something else. That means it believes something in the heart but says something else. See, out of your whole heart is everything going to give. Okay, let's look, look here. It says here, don't talk out of both sides of your mouth. You know what that means? You say something here about the situation. Then you go again here and say something else about the situation. You say something, oh, this person is good, 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 good. And then you go to someone, you know this person is so bad. That's talking about both sides of your mouth. What does that do? Why is it so vital to learning? We all know why is it important to faith and all that. But why is it important to learning is because your heart is looking at it. You know when you talk some things that are not true, when you keep on saying lies, what happens is the heart convinces itself maybe he's lying. You know that is the main reason why we don't die when we say I'm going to die now. When God says, if I'm going to die now, God will die. You know why? Because God is absolutely convinced by what he is saying. That means if he says something, there is so much conviction, so much absolute intent, and everything is lined up that that thing happens. Exactly that way, if you are concentrating the way God does, if you believe, because Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, pick up from here, go into the sea. See, he's not just saying in spiritual terms. He's talking physically. Pick up from here, go into the sea. That would happen. You know why? Because when Jesus said it, he absolutely believed it. The point with us is that we have not convinced our heart of everything we say to be truth. We don't always say the truth. We say something, but we are believing something else. See, sometimes I think, I think it is... It, when we talk about faith, because sometimes we take faith and stretch it so out that we are just looking faith as a tradition, not as a reality. Don't make faith a tradition. Make it a reality. That means if I don't have faith, for example, if you don't have faith for this, tell your heart, I don't have faith. God, I need more faith. I need to know more faith. I'm going to say because you said say it. I'm not going to say because I am at that point here. Because you, you, I'm going to say I'm strong because you said to the weak, say I'm strong. I'm not going to say it's I'm strong because in my inside, I know I'm strong. No. See, when you do that, you are convincing your heart of a different reality. And that is why when you say things, your heart doesn't believe it. See, when you say things, th things don't happen. Because you have what we call deceived your heart into learning something the different way. So when you focus on your words, let it be what your heart is saying. Don't just make it a tradition. When you say it by faith, mean it by faith. When, when you come to the pastor, oh yes, I need to be here, I need to have prayer. Prayer or I've got something, need prayer. See, the pastor can't understand how to pray for you. Pastor isn't God. He doesn't know what your mind is, what, what is paining and what not. But the truth is, if you can come and tell, tell and then you can get help. That is the same way when we are looking in life. Say it, believe it, and then take it. Don't just say it and leave it there. You know what we do most of the time? Why faith and words don't connect? When we look at a problem, we say all the bad things about the problem. When we come to the pastor, we pick up all the bad things and put it away and then say only the good things about the problem. Take about all those things, tell the pastor, and then tell this is what the word says. This is what the word says about the Bible. This is what. That's what Jesus did. Didn't he do that? When the devil came with the problems, what did he give back? He gave back proof. He gave back faith. What is faith? Is giving back proof of what God has said about the situation. Keep away from your deceitful mouth. 
don't say things just because you have to say it. Don't just use your mouth to say some things on the both hands. Amen? Can you have the keyboard? So all of these things we've learned. How many things we've learned? Five. Five. Okay, everyone can say it because this word should be in your heart by now. <laughs> Give attention. attention. Okay? Ready. Then second, <laughs> incline your ears. Okay, third, keep of your eyes, okay? Keep them in the midst of your heart and okay. Keep away from you deceitful mouth. Okay. So all of these things, I want you to understand this thing. When you talk about learning, it's not just doing something in any order. Okay? There's a purpose why Solomon said this verse, then this, then this. Because there's an order. When you want to learn something, use this order. Okay? Because this is the instruction that God gives. And to, to summarize it all, let's let look at this. this. We are looking at Proverbs chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 20. Let's look at verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father. Let's stop there. Instruction of a father. Solomon is teaching an instruction that he has learned from his father. His father was a man after God's own heart. He is teaching his son the truth that he has learned from God. Not from just some book, not just from somewhere else. He's learned this. And all that he's telling is just so that you can do this and attend to no understanding. I remember a time when I was studying the word understanding and this is what God told me, okay? The measure of your understanding determines your harvest the Bible says 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold but the point of the Bible is not to stop at 100 fold the 30 fold is the level of your understanding the 60 fold is the level of your understanding the 100 fold is the level of it if you can go, go if, you go, if your understanding can grow to a thousand fold you can get the thousand fold if your understanding can grow higher, you can go higher in harvesting. You don't need to be just limited to the hundredfold. See, remember when he talks about the hundredfold, hundredfold doesn't mean hundred percent. Okay? It means, you know how you fold a paper? That's what it means. If you fold a paper a hundred times and you open it, how many multiples you've got? Go try it at home. That's what it is. It's a folding. If you fold it once, you get twice. If you fold it twice, you get four times. And it keeps on growing that way. So the truth is your level of understanding about God's word is going to determine how much you're going to harvest. Because everyone's got the same seed. You know, you and I have the same seed. Why does the, that seed produce a different harvest level in another person's life compared to mine? It's not because the seed is different. It's what's happening with the seed. What's happening, how much I know that seed. How much that seed I have become mine. How much I've heard it. How much I've remembered. How much I've put it in my heart and meditated. That's the learning power. The understanding. With everything, God says, get wisdom. Get understanding. Let's close our eyes. Father, we come to you. We come to you as children receiving instruction. Yes, Lord, Father, we can learn of all you are, but if we don't understand how to make it ours, Lord, there is no worth in learning, Lord. Because if learning doesn't have an end, if learning doesn't have an end reward, then what are we learning for? There's better things to do in life, Lord. Yes, Lord, Father, there's better things to do in life. Because, Father, we, when we learn, we are, we are actually convincing that this is a greater truth in our life. That our lives are going to be better. That I, when, I, when I pick up the Bible, when I pick up all the books that I've read through, all the messages that I hear through, I'm not just doing it as a tradition. I'm not just doing so that I can convince others, oh, look, I have so much faith. 
I'm not just convincing myself I've got so much faith, but I actually am teaching myself this is life. This is how we live. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by hearing the word of God. We here as your children receive instructions, Lord. Yes, Lord Father, we thank you for this. Father, we take this moment and and let's what we'll do, Lord Father, we'll, we'll cast all those cares, Lord, because that is not worth caring at all. No matter what cares we've been carrying throughout this day, no matter how, how many cares we've been putting about all these weeks, months, and life, because the word says, Father, that word is going to be mine tonight, is that word says, cast your cares upon the Lord. Because why? Because He cares for you. The truth is, if you can believe that He cares for you, there is no reason to hold on to cares. If you can believe that God actually cares for you, that He is a Father, that He will take care of this, then you will cast the care. I'm just not going to hear the word, Lord. I'm not just going to remind myself, but I'm going to plant it in my heart and I'm going to see to it that that half seed is going to be able to grow in the harvest. I'm going to give Him the right atmosphere. I'm going to give the seed the right place, the opportunity to grow and become a great harvest. Yes, Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. And Father, Father, we want to give this moment, this opportunity to anyone who does not know God's greatest seed, Jesus. What He did for us on the cross is the reason we can come here and stand and talk about God. There is no learning, if there is no purpose of learning anything about God if we don't have Jesus in our life. It's just religion, Lord, and we don't need religion to save us because religion cannot save us. Only Jesus can. Only Jesus can. So, Father, if if anyone is here or even if, if you're watching, I want to give you this opportunity to know Jesus. If you're with us and everyone here will do this, we'll pray with you, we'll believe with you. So everyone here, let's let's pray together and say, Heavenly Father, Father, I believe in Jesus Jesus, who died and rose again again, the third day day, for the forgiveness of my sins. sins. Jesus, Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life life to follow you you and serve you from this day forth. I ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit Spirit. to fill me and guide me all the days of my life. life. In Jesus' name I pray.